Hello, my name is Lori and I'm a student at Vancouver Community College taking the Provincial Instructor Diploma Program, currently enrolled in 3230 The Evaluation of Learning. This is my video on a classroom assessment technique called the Memory Matrix. Over the course of this video, I will explain what a memory matrix is and describe what context this technique is best suited to. I'll outline advantages and limitations of the memory matrix, its best practices, and how to provide feedback. Do you really know something if you can't remember it? As an instructor, how do you know your students are able to recall important course content? And how can you help those students manage, organize, and learn large amounts of information? The memory matrix is an informal assessment technique which focuses on assessing students' ability to remember and categorize new knowledge. Here's an example of a sample memory matrix. It's a two-dimensional diagram divided into rows and columns with some simple headings. Students fill in the blank cells of the memory matrix and when they do so, they're providing feedback that can be quickly scanned and easily an analyzed. The purpose of the memory matrix is to assess student recall of important course content and their skill at quickly organizing that information into predetermined categories. By using this technique, teachers can quickly see not only whether their students have memorized the basic information, but also how well they have organized that information in their memories. The memory matrix is best suited where teaching goals are aimed at improving memory, improving reading skills, developing study skills, habits, and strategies, learning new facts and terms, and learning new concepts and theories of a particular subject. The memory matrix is particularly useful for assessing student recall and basic comprehension of facts and principles in a course with high informational content such as natural sciences, learning a new language, music theory, history, and law. There are several advantages to using this assessment technique. For instructors, it's easy to create. It's a flexible tool which can be used individually in pairs, groups, or in entire classes, and for a variety of subjects. Its simple format makes it easy to review and analyze. The memory matrix can be integrated after a lecture, after reading assignments, or videotapes in class time. It can be used as a pre-instructional assessment tool as well to determine prior knowledge. For students, this assessment strategy is easy to use. It helps improve memory. It also helps learners manage, organize, and learn large amounts of information. Its graphic quality is good for those who are strong visual learners, and it takes little time to complete. There are limitations, however. For the instructors, students' answers may or may not represent what they have learned in class versus their prior knowledge. Complex content may be difficult to categorize. And the matrix format can make complex dynamic systems seem static. For learners, the predetermined rows and columns do not allow for creativity or alternate ways to categorize information. Best practices to use when creating a memory matrix include creating a simple matrix where row and column headings represent the most logical categories and the most important information. Fill in the blank cells yourself with appropriate facts. Use the same vocabulary that is used in lectures, discussion, readings, and any other instructional materials. Ensure you've got a good fit between row and column headings and the facts in the cells. Revise the memory matrix if necessary. Once you're satisfied with your matrix, create a new one with only row and column headings with spacious but empty cells. Provide space for a larger number of items than you expect. Once you're happy with your end product, duplicate the matrix and hand it out to students. Direct students to provide the information needed to fill the cells. Also, set a realistic amount of examples that you expect to be in each cell. 
3 is probably a maximum number. Once students have completed the matrix, collect the matrix and assess them for correctness and completeness of information. There are a couple of different ways to analyze the data in a ma memory matrix. One way is to tally the number of instances of correct items in each cell and then look for noticeable differences, both in total and in average numbers of correct responses between and among cells. This analysis will reveal what students know well. Another approach is to focus on the incorrect items by tallying them and looking for patterns. If there are clear imbalances in the numbers of correct items in cells, it may indicate a failure to recall or correctly categorize specific types of information. Now that you've analyzed your data, you are ready to provide some feedback. Share the tallied results with the class, noting common errors and reinforcing correct responses. Feedback should be delivered in class to the entire class as soon as possible and immediately if possible. Focus mini lessons or lectures or discussions addressing misconceptions should be conducted to prevent future errors. Once this has been done, you can re-administer the same memory matrix to reinforce the learning. Next, follow up with individuals if necessary. This concludes my video on the memory matrix, a classroom assessment technique. Thank you for watching.